Okay, so recording started, and let's go ahead and take a look at the feet structures. So first of all, we do have some anatomy that is worth noting and memorizing, primarily the bones, because that's where a lot of our flexibility comes from and where our structures are um, generally going to attach to each other. So let's very quickly go over that. We already did the leg, so we've got tibia and fibula up here side by side, and they are creating this sort of, um, usually we think about it as sort of a wrench gripping a ball kind of shape because that's what we're going to later structure, where the sides of these two bones are creating those noticeable nodules that you get in the side of your ankle, uh, these ones up here. Okay. And they're creating the sort of ball joint that we have for our flexibility of our foot itself. Um, the talus, which is this first large bone, is the one that is primarily causing that um, ball and socket sort of rotation for the foot. So as you're probably aware, you've got pretty large range of motion for your foot. Um, you've got these two, by the way, these two terms are sometimes commonly used, um, but I, I'm not gonna require that you memorize them or anything. Uh, when you flex your foot or the flexion of your foot is the upward rotation of your foot so that your toes get closer to your shin. And extension is when you do the opposite, you activate the Achilles, and you point your toes downward. And so you've got a pretty big range of motion forward and backward in the talus, um, which is that ball of the foot. Side to side, however, you don't have very much flexibility in your ankle, okay? Not a whole lot. You've got a bit, so the way that you can test this is if you plant your foot flat on the ground and you try to lean your leg left and right without lifting your foot off the ground, you'll find that your foot very quickly wants to start to roll off the ground. And so that shows that there's a limited amount of flexibility in the talus, but not a whole lot. More of the flexibility uh, side to side comes from the ball of the foot. The ball of the foot would be in these bones and joints, the metatarsals, okay? You can see from the side, we've got this grouping of bones that are sort of at the top of the arch of the foot. And then we've got these grouping of large bones that go all the way down to the connection of the toes. And that connection of the toes, that's the ball of the foot, okay? So it's where you would rotate up onto your toes and the um, foremost part of your foot first, and then try to move it around and see how much flexibility you've got. Um, there you've got a, a good deal of sideways flexibility. What these bones are for, one, two, three, four, five, right? I don't know why I missed that first one. Um, those five bones are for fanning out, okay? So if you can fan out, so one of them is lower, the next one's higher, 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 then you can rotate side to side like that, okay? So that's where a lot of that flexibility comes from. They do not really fan out like this though. So spreading your toes is really not taking place in the metatarsals. It's just kind of taking place in the phalanges, which is the actual first bone of the toe itself, the one that would be visible. So if you have to see where the skin separates, if I just draw up between these like this, the skin would be sort of right here around each one of these toes with the flat part of the foot being where the metatarsals are. Okay, so you can kind of see that in the side view as well. So the phalanges are what you call the toe bones. And I think there's names for the different phalanges, but you just have to think of them as a whole group. Just toe bones is fine with me. Um, there is a uh, different number of bones in the big toe, but the rest of them have three, okay? So if you look at the pinky toe, let me zoom out a bit more. We've got this first long one, second, and then third, and we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Big toe has one, two, okay? So you may not have ever noticed that, but if you try to flex your big toe with your fingers, just grip it and bend it around, you'll find that it has one less joint than the other ones. Of course, the last joint in your other toes is very small, it's right near the uh, nail of the toe, so just behind the nail of the toe but it is there. And surprisingly, your pinky has one too. Although if you don't have that flexibility in your pinky, that's kind of reasonable. Sometimes we cram our toes into shoes so much that this final joint just kind of, I don't know, gets stuck or 
you know, gets smashed so much that you can't really tell it's there anymore. So especially if you wear very tight shoes. Okay. All right. Any first questions about this structure so far? Good. Like it. Cool. Oh, I just had a big hiccup in my computer. There we go. All right. So basic structure there. Um, one more. Uh, the calcaneus, which is this last one in the back here. Well, what's going on, Photoshop? You okay? Let's try that one more time. There we go. Calcaneus is your heel bone, okay? And uh, pretty much it's just one big chunk in the back there. Um, to my knowledge, it is not in, it's not flexible at all from the arch of the foot. This is all sort of one big unit here, with the exception that this part has a little bit and then there's more in this second part which attaches to the metatarsals. So that part, there is some flexibility. So you can fold your arch just a little bit, but not really very much. Most of it is way down here in the ball of the toe. Okay. So our two primary flexible areas, ankle, ball and joint. Well, I keep going all the way back to this place where I can't draw. Ankle, ball and joint, and then ball of the foot. Those are the two big flexible areas. And then the toes can sort of flare upward and pinch downward, um, depending on what you're doing. Okay. All right. So let's look at structure. Here, I've got a footprint layout to kind of give you a general idea of uh, proportions. So this foot is, is sort of um, a big wedge, thinner at the base, right? Thinner at the heel, wider at the pads at the front, and then sort of tapering in a bit to the toes. Although the pattern of flaring outward is sort of maintained throughout in that if you draw a straight line through the entire foot, all the toes kind of point outward in a fan from that straight line. So make sure that you maintain that even though the shape might pinch, the bones are sort of angling outward a bit um, just as the metatarsals are. Uh, if you draw a halfway point uh, along the length of the foot, you're going to land just behind the ball of the foot and the pads. The actual bones would be somewhere closer to probably about up here in the center, but a halfway point would be sort of the end of the instep of the foot. Um, you guys can tell that this big shaded area here that I'm blocking in, that's uh, a point where the foot would not contact the ground if you had a typical arch of your foot. Right, And then you're probably familiar th uh, with the concept of having flat feet or having high arches that will shift this line left and right depending on which one of those conditions you have. So if you have flat feet, really flat feet, in fact, might look like this with no arch visible whatsoever. Um, slightly flat feet will just have a diminished arch of the foot like that. And then if you have very high arches, it can drive that arch far, far over to the left-hand side to where you might only have about this much left in contact with the ground over there, depending on the person, okay? We've got three pad areas primarily, or two, depending on how you wanna look at it. There's a left and a right lobe for the ball of the foot. Um, and there's a cleft that is visible when you are um, bending your foot um, extremely or uh, making a footprint on the ground, so be aware that there are two lobes. And then the heel pad, which is some of the toughest skin on your body. Um, so tough that you can take a knife to it and not even wince. Uh, you can shave parts of it off if you've ever done that for like a beauty routine. Uh, a very, very thick skin because um, it's designed to allow you to walk around barefoot without pain. So pretty interesting. Okay, then we have the toe groups. Okay, if you go another fourth of the distance approximately in sort of an arc, then you're going to depart the, um, the foot primary structure and enter into the toe structure. The lesser toes tend to group together in something of a group like this one. And the big toe tends to stand apart or sometimes it can get crammed in. Uh, but as you saw, the bone structure is slightly different. Okay. Any questions about that? Cool. From the side, here's that breakdown. So if you were to draw that halfway mark again, this is that halfway, halfway mark somewhere in that region. You can see I've got like a second line here. I'm not quite sure 
um, why I did that, but it's somewhere in that region. Uh, then another fourth approximately is where the feet are going to um, turn into toes, and it depends on which toe you're talking about, which side you're looking at, how far back or forward that's going to happen. Um, we've got the arch area raised up from the ground typically, the pad area in contact, and one-fourth in the back is usually pad with that line going straight up the center of the ankle ball. Okay, So if I were to draw an ankle on this one, it would be somewhere in this region here. Okay, Cool. Did I do a front and... Oh, I did front and back view is cool. Okay. Um, there's also different patterns for the toe and foot layout, sometimes depending on um, depending on your, your background and depending on what you do with your feet. Um, if you do not wear shoes, your feet will tend to have a stronger arch but a wider footprint uh, as your toes splay out, right? So that would be something like the wing shape, uh, potentially. Um, maybe even the Flintstone shape as long as the arch is still present. That's if you don't wear shoes very often. If you wear shoes a lot, it tends to squeeze the toes together. That can sometimes result in a Flintstone foot, depending on the shoe type, but more likely the wing, which pinches inward and together, especially in women, where the design of the, the footwear can be really punishing, okay? But any of these patterns could also be hereditary. So you could just have one of these patterns of toes through absolutely no fault of your own, just you know, got it from your parents. Um, if you have uh, flatter toes, that tends to be thought of as slightly less um, athletic because um, splaying toes is a way to get more stability and more power when you're turning and, and changing direction rapidly. But that's kind of a stereotype and not really supported by very much. Um, I've given them nicknames just to kind of remember the shapes. And you can think about character archetype or you know caricature as you're applying these to various people that you draw. Okay. So just as you know, it is going to be acceptable if you see a person, if you draw a person with the middle toe, um, as in the first of the minor toes being the uh, one that's the longest, or it could be that um, the middle toe and the big toe are tied, or it could be that the big toe is the one that's the longest. Any of those are acceptable. All right. All right. As you can see here in these um, flexion and extension drawings, there's a basic structure that needs to be observed in the foot generally, and it's kind of reflected in this leftmost drawing over here in that if you start from the ankle and go down and just kind of create this big wedge shape, right? You're starting out pretty good, but you have to add a little extra to the back to get a proper heel, okay? After that, there's a sort of area where the foot structure will flatten out somewhat, depending on pose. And then finally, there's the toes, which can be treated like a wedge initially, but then need to have their own structure added after the fact. And you can see that in action here because of the way that they're able to flex, that we've got this being that first wedge area, okay, with the extension for the heel. This being that second flat-ish area before the toes, and then this being the toe structure third, okay? Thinking of it that way simplifies it a lot and makes it a lot easier to draw it in different um, different extensions and compressions and bending and all sorts of poses. Uh, again, over here, so if we follow that through, we would have this essentially for our first section, this for our second section, and that for a third. So here's our toes, our flat area, and our primary structure, whoa, with the heel added in. If you want to think about it as four, you can, but I almost never do. I like to think of it as one. Okay, inflexible large portion. Okay. Let's take a look at some other angles. Oh, from the front, by the way, you're gonna want the um, sides of the foot to taper inward toward the ankle. Widest point would usually be at the ball of the foot. I think I have, there we go front and back drawings over here. So it's going to sweep downward towards the ball of the foot and then probably get thinner towards the toes typically. And that's gonna be visible from both the front and the back with slight differences in what the details look like. Uh, but I did duplicate this one 
to move it over and then reauthor it with without toes and now with a heel just to kind of show the difference. But keep in mind that this part, right, ball of the foot is the widest part of the foot. And up near, just above the ankle, usually that's going to be one of the thinnest points of the leg um, right before the calf muscles take over and just as they're flaring out um, to create the ankle bones. Okay. If you're looking, yeah. Good. The ankle bones on this drawing that you did, um, are they actually uh, the inside of part of the um, ankle is a little bit higher than the other? Yes, uh, inside is higher, yes. Oh, wow. Inside is fibula, outside is tibia. So you can see that over here. Oh, wait, sorry. Opposite. Opposite, yep, you're right, opposite. I did it wrong. Inside is tibia. Outside is fibula. Weight bearing on the tibia. Weight bearing on the tibia. That's a good way to think about it, right? Right there on the top of the of the um, talus. Okay. So yeah, higher on the inside. So the reason for that, by the way, is kind of cool. That if you think about it, like here's the bend of that ankle, and then we've got this platform that we set our foot down on and your legs going straight up, if we slide our foot outward, right, and we want to bend, right, now it's gonna kinda even out a little bit as we start to rotate this platform and start to bend this bone back. It kind of gets a little bit more even towards the ground, um, but we don't often have to cross our feet across the center line of our body, bending it the opposite way. So I think that's why that angle kind of exists because then the pivot is going this direction, which is gonna be more useful to us typically. Or it could just be that you need the weight bearing on the inside portion so that nothing breaks. Not sure, kind of making it up. Don't have anything to substantiate that, but that's my pet theory. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, any other questions so far? Cool. All right. So if you are looking at the sides of the foot from the front and the back, the instep portion is going to tend to be a little bit more vertical and the outer portion, the pinky side portion, is going to tend to flare out a little bit more, okay, just typically. Now that's going to change depending on angle, but you can sort of see that the pinky bones are creating sort of a outward sweep and the uh, large toe, the big toe, is sort of going almost in a straight line. I tend to think of the straightest toe being the first toe instead of the, the large toe, and that the large toe goes a little bit out to the right, and the rest of them kind of flare out and cascade like that. But that this uh, first toe here would be the one that is the straightest. Again, that might change per person, and it might change depending on your shoes and stuff that you do. Okay, so from the front, we're going to see this flaring shape. Um, I've drawn here this arc to show that's what the, the um, form would be doing. There's a big lift in the center of the arch of the foot, um, so make sure that that is represented as round, typically. You may end up seeing uh, different bones or tendons in the top of the foot, depending on how tense it is. From the opposite side, we're primarily going to be looking at heel and Achilles tendon right here. Okay. The Achilles is a big, strong feature of the back of the foot, and if you leave it out, then it's very likely it's not going to look like the back of a foot. Okay. Keep in mind that the pad is flexible, so if you start by drawing a ball and then you smash it down flat, that tends to be a nice indication that you've got tension on that point. But strictly speaking, there would be a little fat bulge out on either side because you absolutely do have soft, fatty tissue in your heels and all around the base of your feet because it's the most needed there from the cushiony impact of walking around barefoot. Okay, So something like that would be a bit more appropriate around all the edges. And in fact, that's definitely appropriate for the sides of the foot too. And even the toes if you're going down to that detail. Okay, So this creates sort of an um, inverted bowling pin kind of shape or a, a bowling pin shape if you like, uh, depending on how much you're going to look at the calf or whatever but it thins out just above the ankle bones, just above the, the two corners of the ankle there. Okay. Same thing is true, the instep portion is a bit more vertical, the outside is a bit more sloped, okay. and you'll see 
little bulges for the pads on the left and right, and you may even see toes depending on the angle. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Looking at toes really quick, the toes, I've exaggerated these drawings here for effect. Um, you probably wouldn't draw them quite so exaggerated most of the time, but they're kind of a stair step pattern um, where if you were to look straight down the toe, the tops of them tend to be a bit flatter with the roundest or roundest portion on the sides lifted a little bit above the center line. And the bottom of them is quite round. Um, you might even get like a little secondary bulge down here depending on, I don't know, whether or not there's no circulation or if you've just got more pads on your toes than other people, you could get a little secondary pinch there. And so that's when you press your toes down, put pressure on them, it flattens out and it fattens the toe just a little bit, but the top tends to not change very much. Um, the only difference is that the tip of the toe might look upward just a bit. When you put pressure on the toe, it might rotate down. Um, and that creates a steeper stair-stepping pattern as opposed to a suspended toe, which might be nearly flat or just a little bit stair-stepped like this, as opposed to the strong stair-stepping like that. Okay, You can probably grip your toes uh, manually, just grip your toes into the carpet, and then you'll see that this stair-stepping pattern becomes really apparent. Okay. Cool. Questions? Who was it? Somebody said something. I said cool. You said cool. Nobody has any questions though. Are you sure? Um, when we do our feet, uh, do we need to do all those poses or it doesn't matter? Um, you're going to use reference to find out what poses you're using. Are you saying like, okay. should you draw every single one of these? No, but it would be a good idea to at least include one pose where they're bending their feet up and one where they're bending them down, and probably at least one where they're like up on the ball of their foot or planting their foot flat. Just variety, you know, for good practice. A good they mixture. Some ballet dancers, they got some good feet action. <laughs> ballet dancers have good but unrealistic feet action. Um, anybody know about ballet dancer feet? Because it's a nightmare. Things on. Yeah, ballet dancers' feet are abused. Those poor ballet dancers, they have to do things that we are not meant to do. And so they get really gnarly, callousy feet with overdeveloped muscles in some ways and cramped features in other ways. It's a real shame to see what they do to their feet. Now, yes, you might get some good poses from that. Just be prepared to see some stuff that maybe you don't want to see if you start looking at ballet dancer feet. If you Google that phrase in particular, you're going to find a horror show immediately. So I'm just warning you there. Okay. So be cautious. Dancing would be a safe thing or dancing poses and then just look at the feet, <laughs> but be careful. All right. Let's look at some cool, well-drawn feet. I found a couple examples here, which I thought were great. And this one in particular, down in the lower right, is very near to the method that I learned for foot construction. Uh, the rest of these are just really structural and well drawn. Whether they're using the same structure or not, I'm not sure, but whatever they're using is working. And you can even see the structure divided up a few different times. Let's get here. A few different times into those similar regions that I was talking about flat arch toe and let me see if we can find any evidence of ball joint I don't see them ever drawing the ball and wrench kind of analogy but that's what I was taught um, whatever they're doing is working for them here's the Achilles on top of this fat pad looking great typically in this kind of pose here where they're well up on the ball of the toes you would find that there's going to be a cleft between those two different fat pads in the bottom. Uh, there we go, right over here. They're doing that. This is a very angular foot that they've drawn for some reason, and I'm not sure about this part where it's doing that stair stripping. That could be accurate. Maybe it's not, um, but this one looks much more accurate to me. 
okay, kind of around in the ball flat, and then it can pinch downward because that's the instep of the toe. If you just drew flat across like that, that would be like a missing arch of the toe. Okay. Ah, here's a really good one with the cleft down here. So as you can see, feet can be expressive. You can draw them from a lot of different angles, but we need to know how to construct all of these different structures so that we can accurately draw them uh, depending on what they're doing. And that's where this sort of um, thing comes in. I've got another um, self-drawn chart that we're gonna look at in a second, but just take a look at this big foot with these kind of three-dimensional drawn shapes superimposed on it because this is kind of what we're gonna try to use, okay? It can be rendered a bit simpler than this, um, but at its like ultimate extension, this is what we would kind of be doing. A couple of things to point out. It's kind of a big wedge, okay? Just to start out, there's a big square portion here, and that can either just go straight up here, depending on how simply you're drawing it. You can go straight up to this area like that, straight back, straight down. That would be a very, very simple wedge structure or you can break it into two steps, going first, whoa, all right. Going first back, then up. That would be a second layer of detail with a division going across here. Or you can go even farther than that, doing that first and then adding this additional wedge on top, which is even more accurate, okay? So we're gonna use this kind of structure and I'm gonna show several different um, passes of detail so that you can Kind of get the idea without being too overwhelmed all at once all right but generally just a big wedge shape okay that is sloping down gradually in the front steeply in the back and then has tube forms for the toes in the front take a quick look at the tube forms of the toes um, they've actually added knuckle detail here and here which sometimes that could be necessary depending on the person but you could probably skip and replace with a shelf oftentimes just up and back up and back that would be completely appropriate or in this case up and back a little bit stronger because this toe has more flexibility okay notice that the pose of the toes is not the same as we go across from big toe to little toe the smallest toe tends to curl downward the most or just angle downward straight. Um, the big toe tends to jut either out or upward sometimes. And then the first toe, we're gonna call this one first, this one big, all right? Just in case that's confusing anybody. I'll say second, third, and pinky. Okay. The first toe usually has the most pronounced stair-stepping behavior, if you have that present. And then it sort of fades off with the second one being a little bit less, the third one either being less or now curving downward. So one, two, three, or three, depending on what's happening. And then the pinky could fully curve down or we could have just a very, very subtle kind of stair-stepping. Okay, so slightly different as we go across the toes. Cool. All right, let's take a look at the chart I've got. All right, so here's kind of a formulaic layout of what we're gonna try to draw when we're looking at feet. Simplest of all, starting up here in the upper left, it's a big wedge. You did it. Congratulations. Okay. There's even some shoes that kind of look like that. Those like um, ankle shoes that you're not quite supposed to wear socks with. Um, people wear them in the summer sometimes. I don't know what they're called, like loafers or whatever. They kind of even look like this structure. Okay. So when in doubt, and if you have absolutely no time to render the foot and you're doing a large pose, you can draw a foot just kind of like a wedge. If you can draw this wedge comfortably and rotate it three-dimensionally, then you're gonna be in good shape to draw simplified feet. So from the side, we're just gonna draw short area for the toes all the way up to a flat area on top and slightly back for the heel. Okay, so that would divide right here. Okay, if this would be the whole ankle area sweeping up to who knows what with a rotatable joint inside of there. 
somewhere we know in this region there's usually a flatter area but we don't necessarily have to put that in right away this is a, a serviceable simple foot okay if we're looking at it from the top we're just going to want to make sure that it goes outward like this okay if we want to add a little bit of dimension to it it's possible we could see the front surface of the toes possibly okay then it's a wedge that comes up to this ankle position that would be somewhere in this region up here let's make it slightly bigger because it's closer to us like that so i'll have this go back and down and i'll have this just connect so it's almost like a car now you can almost imagine putting headlights on it, tires and stuff like that. Okay. Um, we could try drawing it from an odd angle. So let's see, I'll put the base of the foot on first, like this. And now I'll try to build upward from there. So we'll go up at this sort of angle, down to the heel. And I'm just trying to drawing this free form and I neglected to put on this wedge, so I'll put it on now. Okay, so there's a big foot going back in perspective as a very simple kind of wedge box shape. Okay? It's a hatchback. It's a hatchback, yeah. So if you want to go one better than that, right, one better than that is to sink down this center portion of this large slope in the front so that it's steeper and then goes flat. And then in the front of the foot, instead of having it flat across, create this sort of peaked center point. And where you put that center point is kind of up to you, but I tend to center it right on this first toe area and make sure that it goes backward um, towards the pinky side. On the toe side, it's up to you if you want it to go flat or backward. Usually the shape of the foot is sort of rounded, and so it's gonna go back a little bit on even on the large toe side, but it's sort of up to you. Um, then you can also lift up the center of the instep area just to get some sensation that that part is lifted off the ground. But the structure of that is pretty, um, pretty fiddly and not really very accurate. This is just kind of to approximate a slightly better shape. So if we want to try doing that on each one of these parts here, what I would do is dive a little bit closer to the ground first and then make this go out flatter and straighter like that. And if this was the instep, something like this would probably be what you would be looking for because remember that's the ball, which is a pad. And this is the heel, which is a pad. And so you kind of want to go from the center of the ankle ball to wherever you put this, um, this downward slope. That's sort of the region that we're looking at, okay? You'd also flatten this out just a little bit since it is round if you're looking to get slightly better structure, but keep in mind that that might shorten it a little bit, so you might be better off extending this up and creating a secondary angle like that, depending on how much detail you're looking to add. We also could just start throwing balls in at this point, um, but they're a little bit less severe in their perspective, so they can be fiddlier when you're posing them. Uh, if we want this to wrap back on the sides, then that means that this is the forwardmost point now, and those other side points are going to come back something like this. We might want to just indicate that somehow, if we're able to. Okay, let's try it on this one that I drew from the top. If I've got this center line just about, I'm going to bring the Big toe side back like that, little toe side back like that. Get rid of those parts. Draw the vertical portions and connect them. So we've got a little bit of the front part of the toe there. And then for this whole area, I'm gonna to wanna to indicate that there is a flatter portion here, and then it quickly rises up a little bit higher. That means this is gonna be a little bit smaller for longer. So kind of like that. Probably a bit too exaggerated, but we'll just let it go for now. Okay, um, from this angle, we wouldn't really see any of the differences in the side, so I can't really render that, but that's what you get. On this one, we can try the same thing. So if we've got a center line coming down this sloped area to about there, well, first I need this to 
go back straighter for longer and then dive up. So we're getting this kind of cut line. Now it's even more like a car, huh? Okay, something like that. Then I can shave off the sides of the big toe and the pinky, probably like that. Okay, add in the thickness. and then erase out the parts that are no longer relevant. I like that. Don't need that. That's the back edge, so we need that. Okay, uh, it looks way too short, actually. I think I've done something wrong. Probably this area, it looks like, needs to be extended. So I think I made a mistake there. Let's grab that and slide it outward. That looks better just to my eye. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. And just remember that this is the box that would be directly underneath the ankle. So if we're going to put that instep in, then we wanna go here, here. You can even go inward a bit more. It can sometimes move sideways inward as well. Something like that. Okay. And of course, we could round out the heel if we wanted to. Okay. So we're moving a little bit closer to a full three-dimensional foot. Are you guys good so far with that kind of simplification? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it occurs to me that on this chart here that I drew so long ago, there doesn't appear to be anything extending backward to create this heel, and there really should be. So I think maybe I wasn't quite sure yet how far back to draw this, but I think it would be more like back here with an additional wedge structure that doesn't seem to be present. So keep that in mind. Can I rasterize that layer? Let's see. I'm just gonna merge them so I have that on there. All right, <clears throat> so then let's look at this full structure for the foot. So usually when I'm starting with the foot, I'm either gonna start with the footprint on the ground or I'm gonna start from the ankle, um, depending on if the foot is suspended or if it's in contact with something. If it's um, pushed down into the ground, either the entire foot or the ball of the foot and the toes or maybe even just the toes are gonna to be touching the ground, you're gonna to need to render those first and then get the direction and length of those before you can add on the rest of them. Uh, usually it's a pretty safe bet that the ball of the toe is gonna to be in contact with the ground, at least if there's contact. Uh, and then just know that this whole area here is flexible and this whole area back here is not flexible. So this needs to travel as a unit, which is why we're thinking of it as a big wedge. Um, did I do an example, by the way, with my simplified one of bending the toes up? I didn't. So let's do that. With that simple wedge that I started out with, this one, there's not a lot of room for flexibility. And so you almost immediately have to go to the number two detail level if there's any bend at all. Uh, but if there is, it's gonna take place here and that's going to rotate all of this stuff up into the air. So we're gonna get something more like this and any of the angles need to be maintained. So whatever this angle was, you need to maintain it up here, okay? And try to imagine things traveling in arcs so that you end them in approximately the same place as if they were just flat on the ground like that, okay? So if I went straight up from there, this would create an angle. Looks like our flat would be here, something like that. And so we've got this wedge structure going down to the toes and you could leave that sharp or you could round it kind of up to you. Okay, so that's kind of a medium bend. You can go farther than this, by the way, the ball of the foot's very, very flexible. Some people can even bend all the way over to an acute angle, like less than 90 degrees. So that's possible, um, especially um, female feet uh, tend to be a little bit more flexible than male feet, just so you're aware, especially in the ankle. 
So you could probably, now that looks broken, doesn't it? That doesn't look very good. Yeah, it looks broken. <laughs> looks broken, huh? So probably what's going on is I've just bent the toe area, but I forgot about this second area that I keep referring to, this sort of like flat forward portion of the foot, this one over here. So let's try again on this one. And instead of just doing that, let's get out at an angle first and then go up. And let's try to get the same angle. Let's try to match that. And then from that point, there we go. Okay, remember this place where the ankle ball um, sort of leaves and becomes the leg? That's going to be perpendicular to the baseline of the foot without the arch. So try to get those things perpendicular. So if we did have the arch, it would be here, like that. Okay, and then the rest of the leg would be going that way, which would be pretty incredible. I guess that's like a runner's start now. But you can see we've got these two rotation centers now, one right where the toes are, one right where the ball is. So make sure that you get that in there, otherwise it's gonna look really weird. Now, this still probably looks a little bit weird, sort of like a Lego person, because we've got these harsh angles. A lot of that will flatten out or smooth out a little bit. Um, some of it will be uh, even more pronounced because of the tension created in these bony areas. But you'll see that in your poses when you start to do your work. Um, you'll see things flatten out and some things take more of the stair-steppy um, sort of pattern. Sometimes they'll take less, depending on what we're talking about. In particular, I think this inside portion would probably smooth way out because that's where your tendons would be and there would be pulling on your toes. So you don't need that angle inward, right? This part, it would probably straighten that out significantly. So you'd gain a little bit of mass there. Okay. If you guys are able to, and you like don't have shoes on, you can look at your feet right now. Um, just look at your feet and then stretch your toes up towards you, both at the ankle and at the toe. And what you're gonna see is all of the tendons start to become visible on the top of your feet, particularly on your big toe, probably, and then usually in a cascade a little bit. Um, just be aware that those things are going to shear off the angles that we've been created and flatten them. So like this, It'd be more likely in this elevated foot, instead of having this that's denoted by those base 3D shapes, you're going to have it straighten out a bit. Okay. Cool. Any questions so far? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. So finally, we're getting to this one. So we got to look at each part of this um, by itself to kind of break it down into the useful shapes. I've been talking over and over about this wrench and ball sort of thing for the ankle. So that's the place I'm going to start right here. Okay. Regardless of the bone shapes underneath, right? Regardless of the, the talus and, you know, the tibia and fibula, we can just think that this is a big ball because everything rotates around it. And that's good enough for our purposes in sort of constructive drawing. But we can't deny that there's these two big bumps coming off the side. They're generally big wedge shapes, we'll just call them. And they come right out of the ball, okay? So in the side of the ball, wrapping around and gripping the side of this ball, and then sort of jutting out like this, and then swinging back in, and usually generally kind of flaring to join the rest of the, the rest of the, um, ankle okay so something like that and so this the shape on the side i mean kind of like it's wrapping around this and like disappearing it depends on how you want to think about it but coming out of this ball like shape and this rounder shape in the front usually you can get a couple little bends and you know sort of angles here but depending on how flex this is this could sweep up straight like that entirely um, so it's not a guarantee. There is usually some sort of cleft here um, right in the front, but not always, okay? On the opposite side, same thing's gonna be happening. So over here, we're gonna get this kind of wedge shape coming out, coming back in, and then sweeping up to the rest of the foot, and it would go back in this direction, but we can't see any of that, okay? But just know that there's a significant front and back portion of this that would have dimension that we would be able to see. Okay. Good so far? Yes. Okay. 
So here's the parts that we can see, at least. Okay. Then on underneath that, um, you could start by just adding a big vertical box, just in sort of the footprint area that all of that stuff is contained in, because this is going to sort of help you to define the area for the instep of the foot. Whichever side of the, the foot has the instep, it could be over here, in which case all of this is going to be filled in and flat, or it could be facing us, in which case this is the part that's going to dip in like that, and the opposite side will be filled in and flat. Okay, whichever orientation we're going. We'll pretend that it's going to face towards us because it gets more, gives us uh, more to look at. But if you just start with a big vertical box like that, you can go all the way down to the floor just for simplicity. Or you can remember that as it contacts the floor, there's going to be this flaring out fat pad all the way around all of these structures that hit the floor. Okay, For the sake of simplicity, let's just let this box come all the way down. Okay, And then we'll go back. And just know that the heel almost always looks round in the back. It's sort of like a ball unto itself. Um, just make sure that it's flattened out when it touches the ground back here. But shave off that angle and then have it gracefully sweep back up in a wedge towards the ankle. Usually not any higher than the back of the ball would be. Okay. Uh, if we are actually looking at the back, then this is going to be a big cylinder. right? going all the way up, just keep that in mind. And you should probably render the heel as um, cylindrical all the way down to the point where it flattens out on the ground. Okay. All right, then moving forward, oh, let me put that in, there we go. Moving forward, we've got a arch that comes across um, from the top where the ball is down to the um, connection point of the toes. This is that flat area that sometimes can be back here and sometimes it can be the first portion of these feet, but it's just on top of the um, first joint of the toes as they exit the foot structure. Um, depending on the person, like this is a pretty exaggerated, now that I'm looking back at having drawn this years ago, I would probably more likely draw it like this today with more of a flat space and then the arch, and this arch is really, really high, but I think I drew it for effect to you know, show the, the kind of structure. So anyway, we'll just say that there's a big flat structure that sort of dives down at first a little bit and then steeply as it enters into the area for the toes. Okay? And a similar box over here that you can just draw for the end of the foot structure that is not toes. Okay? Um, in here, you can see that I've got, this is a box coming up like that. You don't have to do something like that because that's just showing what the, the bony parts would be. The bony parts are going to be all of the um, metatarsals and the, the tendons that are making up the arch. This space in here is sort of muscle, soft tissue, and pad, which is why it's represented this way. Uh, but I would recommend just kind of don't include the sides of this. Just think about if we are looking at the instep, then we need to create a sort of platform shaped or right that sort of shape of indentation of where that stuff is missing. Or if we're on the opposite side, we need to ignore that entirely and just come all the way down and all the way back. So this is represented here just sort of as a shortcut to say that this is pad, this is flexible, this is potentially arch, and that is pad and usually far less flexible. Okay. Uh, like I said, we're going to pretend like this is facing towards us, though. So in this case, uh, if I'm coming down, I'm going to probably start to angle this upward in this case, come across, and then come back down like that, which will change the structure a bit. Okay. And this is still very, very exaggerated, but that would just send this coming back that way from this point instead. Okay. The rest of this would be just filled in flat. Still doing good? Do we need to do all these steps? You need to try. Okay. Okay. Try to make as three dimensional, as realistic, as acceptable a drawing of the foot as you can. But remember that the reason that I'm showing these different steps is because this one is the easiest. Start there. If you can't do that, then you're not going to be able to do the next ones, right? This one is a little bit more complicated and a little bit more realistic. 
This one is way more complicated and way more realistic. So take it as far as you're able. Okay. All right. So from that point, now we've actually got to the toes and we would have to think about where along this each one of the toes would come out. I can see that this is a little bit cramped in perspective. I actually should have ended up probably over here instead, but old drawing, a little bit weird in the proportions. Um, and we need to chop that up into the different areas that would contain each of the toes. Now, what you don't see here is that this coming out and going back in, because that was just sort of a convention that we were using up here to kind of approximate toes. If we're doing all of this structure building where we've got the body of the foot and then the toes, you don't need to do that. This can get, just go straight across. But in reality, as you can see over here, even that part should be bending, okay? So if you want way, way more work, this has to come out somewhat and go back in and all of that needs to affect the attachment points of the toes as well. But you probably don't want way more work, so let's leave it flat for the moment. Then all of these toes, they're roughly cylindrical, are gonna come out of these surfaces as we go across, and usually are gonna either come out, go down, and come out again, or sometimes are gonna curl down, depending on what we're talking about. In this particular example, I've got just the big toe here as sort of a boxy, semicircular shape coming out like this, coming down, and then resuming, coming out again like that, and then the three-dimensional part just kind of born out like that. The rest of them, of the other toes, are treated like one big shape, which you can do, okay? Just depending on what sort of angles you want, but this whole big shape, you could sort of think of this as like um, sandals where all of these toes are grouped on one side of the thing that goes between your toes and the other one is separate. Um, usually that's enough flexibility for most cases in your posing. Very seldom do all of your toes flay out um, one by one, although it is totally possible to get that, okay? So that's the basic foot structure before I actually look at what's going on with the toes. Um, accepting the back, by the way, looking back on this, I know that this big piece here was a part of the education I received in drawing the foot. I don't know what it is and I no longer use it. So maybe you shouldn't, or maybe you should figure out what it is and don't be lazy like me. I think what it's there for though, is to attach the sides of the ankle down into the structure of the foot. I think that's what it was there for while the Achilles passes by it. I think that's it. But I have no idea what this part back here is supposed to be. It's not calcaneus, or maybe it is. Who knows? I can't remember anymore think, what that's for. I think that it looks to me like it was put there in order for, um, for to get the better alignment on the rest of the drawing. Maybe. I, I have no idea. I don't remember. So, good theory. <laughs> All right, any questions before I look at the toe? We good? Cool. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, about the foot. Yes. Why is the, the bottom of the foot high and not flat? You mean like physiologically why? Yeah. I want to say it's something about like arches being strong as far as engineering is concerned, that they distribute pressure more evenly. But really, I don't have an answer. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I wanna say it's something like that. I know that the human foot is fairly unique in the animal kingdom, and that the only kind of approximations for it are ones like a kangaroo's where it's got a pad with some claws and then it's got a very, very long middle section with a little extra like dew claw in the back so it can rest on it. But they don't walk on their feet upright the amount that we do. I think it's because um, human beings walk upright for so long, for so much of the day, that we need a really flat, nice, stable platform to put all that pressure down on. So that middle part lifts up so that it creates more of an arch shape and that distributes the pressure more evenly. 
Otherwise, too much of the pressure would go down straight in the middle and sort of concave your feet. Again, pure speculation, not sure if that's true. What I will say, but it would help distribute more of the weight towards the front of the foot too. Sure. Push it that way. Yeah, that I, that makes sense. Well, what I will say is that I do know that if you look at other animals, their foot physiology is interesting because what we think of as our ankle or heel ends up being what you would think of as their knee. And so they have a foot, like let's say a dog or something where we've got his toes down on the ground. And then it comes back up like this. And then it goes forward like this. And then it goes back again like that. And what we're actually looking at here is ankle, ankle, and that would be heel, but we really wouldn't think about it that way. They've got probably a dew claw over here, which is sort of like thumb, but not really. And then this is just toes. That makes this the knee and this all the way up here, the hip. But the body of the dog is gonna be like here. So this part, the knee part is barely visible. The hip part's not visible at all. And so it looks like you just have a backward leg like this, when in actuality they have a lot of the same muscle structures and bone structures that we do, just in a different shape and proportion. Cool, huh? Yeah. And the same thing goes for bird legs. Bird legs do the same kind of thing. All right, let's look at the toes. So the toes you can think of as either cylinders or cubes, depending on what you want to draw. Um, that are going through this kind of pattern. But bear in mind that the top of that stair stepping is where the knuckles are. So just like the knuckles on your hand are this sort of roundish, you know, bulging shape, if your toes are flexing or bending, you've got these cylinder shapes that are gonna kind of stand out from the rest, okay? And sometimes that can affect the, the stair stepping appearance a bit. So they'll tend to line up with whatever the previous bone is and sort of contribute to that downward slope into the next um, section, okay, kind of like that. This is not necessarily right where the, the digit bends, but it tends to be more accurate to place it up higher like this than lower, which means that down here on the bottom, you're gonna have a kind of accordion thing happening where it can spread out and it can also pinch together which is gonna create more fat folds and wrinkles. So very similar to your fingers, if you fold your fingers over, you can see crevices and creases start to form underneath, and eventually the fat folds become really pronounced, and then they all smash together. Uh, your toes can kind of do the same thing. It's just not very common to pinch your toes super hard downward like that, unless you're a ballerina, and then you do it all the time. So a toe could potentially round out like this, and then squeeze down like this. You have big pads in the middle, big pads, big pads, big pads, and then they all smash together and you get this flat kind of Y shape like this. And who knows where that's going, but that would attach to the rest of the foot. So something like that. Less exaggerated, it just means that these bits bulge down, okay? And these bits stay flat on the top. Okay. We good? Yes. We need more info? Oh, one more bit. For the sake of a footprint, as you can kind of see in this sketch here, these parts tend to leave a footprint as in touch the ground. These parts tend to not. Okay. Depending on the shape of the particular foot, or how bendy their toes are. This is what contributes to that characteristic footprint shape that those parts are being pressed right against the surface. And these other parts are coming from the foot structure, but they're doing that stair step down. So they don't tend to touch the ground. Okay. Unless you are at the beach. Yeah, if you're at the beach, you're gonna sink so deep 
that they will touch the ground also, but you'll still have these little pinprint endpoints of the tips of the toes in addition to the big indentation of the whole toe. But that's a good point. And uh, you can kind of tell, like I had a friend who uh, went to a Naval Academy and they learned tracking. You can kind of tell how fast someone is going in what direction by the depth of the print, how much of the print is transferred, that sort of thing, where the dirt was flung. It was a really cool kind of um, little talk that he gave about what they were learning and tracking. And that would be really easy to do on sand. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. All right, should we try to look at some de some uh, examples? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Should I should I type in dancer feet and then put like a parental warning on this video, or should we just try like something else? Something else. <laughs> okay. Um, let's try. Um, I know that like gymnastics is a pretty good one, or like um, high jump or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm reluctant to just type in feet and see what we get though. What am I gonna type? I'll type feet poses and see what we get. Feet poses. Hopefully I get photography. All right, there's someone who's provided some like stock photos from up to down. Now these aren't so bad. I was gonna be horrified. I like this one because it's got a lot more character. You can actually see the stair-stepping behavior there because um, his feet are a little bit more muscular. So let me drag that one out just because that's a good example to start off. I like this one as well. This is good because it's from another angle. And it's kind of cool because it's in the air and not being stressed. Ooh, look at that. Really cool perspective kind of thing. Let's see. Are these photos? I think those are 3D renders. Not sure. These are also paintings. So try to get photographic reference when you get yours. Let's see. She's stressing the feet. You can actually see the tendon line in the foot, even at this distance, because she's stressing them. There's a bend. That's pretty cool to see how, when it's flattened out, you can still see the two different pads, the cleft between them, and then the color changes too because of the blood being forced into or out of certain parts of the skin. So that's kind of neat. This one's bordering on creepy, but you know, I guess we're showing off the jewelry or something. I think it's getting... The last one you had, uh, you can kind of tell that she has a high arch because of the where the bread is at is only on a small part of the end. True, yeah, and you, here's the pad right here. We can see it, as well as these wrinkles. We do get wrinkling in the feet because the skin is thicker and tougher. And so, as opposed to most of our skin, which can like flex and sort of squish, the skin on the, the ball of the foot in particular is a little bit more um, prone to showing these wrinkles. Oh, here's a good example of some of those tendon lines and bone lines. There we go. And kind of a casual bending of the feet upward. Here's a nice perspective pose. Oh, and a footprint. Just like we were talking about. This is a guy I think that spends a lot of time barefoot because look at the width of that foot, right? And it's very splayed out, at least while he's been walking around on the beach today. This has probably contributed to having to spread the feet out just a little bit. But also the pinky has this notable inward bend, which indicates like shoes. Like that's what shoes do to your pinky. Um, I did see some studies about um, indigenous people's feet who don't wear shoes at all and the different kind of structures that take place when you're habitually walking around without any kind of arch support. Yeah, your feet get, get pretty wide. They get wide, but they get strong too. Uh, and in the Western yeah. world where we put like insoles in our shoes, our feet get really weak and prone to um, fallen arches. Yeah. Oh, look, some little baby feet. Um, baby it's feet, by the way. Feet. Yeah, they curl down a lot <laughs> is the, the thing. You get fat on the top, right? Little wrinkles. You get almost no arch at all because they don't have the strength 
in the, the structures yet, and also the length of the bones to kind of support an arch. Um, so the arch would be visible over here, but right now you don't see it. And the toes tend to squeeze downward with the exception of the big toe. So it's kind of cute to see. That's how they do their balance when they walk. Yeah, they grip with those toes for a while until they start to get the confidence in their upper body to just use the heel and ball structure. And then you'll see like toddlers transition from that sort of um, percussive step into a more graceful step as they get to like three years old or so. Yep. And I love locomotion, so that's why I know that stuff. Oh, that's cool. You can almost see the stair stepping just in the big toe as well. Um, see that the nail has turned upward now that there's so much pressure on the toe. And we've got a really big, wide, flat pad of the toe with a lot of bending outward. Uh, okay, so I already downloaded a couple of examples I think we can take a look at. I think that's a render and not a photo. That's a pretty good one. So let's look at what, what I got. So I dropped them onto my desktop over here. Oh, I wanted to drag that in, come here. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I see these other ones. Mm, not very well, so we'll stick to this one then. All right, so we're looking straight down in the front of the feet, and I can start to point out some of these structures. Here, of course, we've got um, one of the two uh, sides of the ankle. The other one, I think, yeah, I think it's right there, I believe. We've got a slight bend, but it's just barely visible. So we've got that um, upward and downward bend. Am I doing it the right direction is the only question I've got. Let's see. I want to check my notes because I keep getting it backwards over and over. Inward, higher, outward, lower. Inward, higher, outward, lower. So let's see, did I? No. Okay, so maybe that's not it. That could just be a vein. It could be a tendon. It's definitely not obviously a part of the ankle, but the inside one definitely is pretty obvious. Like that has got to be ankle bone right there. That has got to be ankle bone right there. So then based on the inward side being higher, we would expect it to be somewhere around here, right, for both sides, but I'm not seeing it. So it's probably all the way tucked behind something like that or like that. It's possible this is just the end structure of that ankle, this little angle, but I can't say for sure, okay? Um, so then we've got this ball area, which is not really a visible thing so much as kind of a, a useful area that we can draw in to structure other things around. We've got this large wedge-like shape that comes down to the toe region. Okay, and you can see there's a pretty significant knuckle area. This would be that secondary flat area, um, whereas the ball of the foot is underneath this portion over here, and all of this can bend. So straight down from there, we've got the pads uh, on the ball of the foot. This area where it is still technically foot and not toe yet is that secondary flat area that we were talking about. Okay. So this can come down and he's got a pretty wide flared foot so it would probably do something like this. Uh, if we just drew straight back, right, that would dodge the instep of the foot but since he's got one, it goes both inward and probably slightly upward to create these two angles and a smaller portion visible here with nothing down in this gap. If we went straight down from the ankle area, we'd probably get something like that so we can see a slight outward jutting of the heel. Excuse me. And then we need to project this forward one more time to where we actually get to this curved surface where the toes are going to depart from the surface of the, of the foot. Okay, so and it's a little hard to get the perspective right on this, but something like that. Okay. All right, so we've got about that far, and now we've got these tube forms for the toes. Uh, remembering that the toe, the big toe, sorry, has only two bones. This is where that joint is. So probably this one is going back and up. And in fact, you can kind of see it that there's sort of a visible structure back here. 
coming kind of down. And then here, it's going out. So it's turned up towards us a bit more. It's coming out to something like out here. Now, he's got very, very wide foot pads. If I just draw in that cylinder shape, it doesn't really match very well because there's so much fat going on. It's all being squeezed out to the sides like this. Okay. And then center line of the top of the cylinder would be something like that to sort of center that toenail on. I didn't talk about the toenails very much, and I probably should, um, but know that they are just a portion of a cylinder. They're curved, right? Curved on the back, curved on the front, and basically just go straight back, although they can be a little bit more complicated than that. Um, certain ones will have a rounder appearance and flare outward. Um, some of them will go straight back. It depends on the person, okay? So we've got at least that here is sort of the departing area of the front part of that toe. And then here is the departing area for the back part of that toe. So if I start to erase out some stuff to make it more clear, One, one question, in our fi final drawings, um, how do you want it to be looking? <laughs> as, close, as close to what you see as you can. Okay. So if you have to, you know, add bits to the sides of your structures, do it. But do start with three-dimensional structures. Okay. So right. do we keep a little bit of the three-dimensional structure and then, you know, like erase some of it if we need to? Can you comfortably do that in 3D? Because if you can, then yes. No, I mean like the structures that you made, like you're erasing, should right. we keep them in is what I mean? Well, let me let me try to answer it like this. If I were drawing this without tracing over the top of it, I would be drawing my own structure that I understand, right? I'd be making boxy shapes and round shapes and trying to figure out where they go. And I wouldn't end up doing like this sort of thing because I probably wouldn't observe it. I wouldn't think to, to add that sort of thing. So I would have a round shape that is a cylinder that goes like out and then figure out what's the new direction. I might turn it or something, but probably it wouldn't end up being exactly like how this guy's foot is. And that's okay. I'm using my own understanding to kind of structure this and you need to use your own understanding to structure it. Um, be critical, like when you draw it and you look and if it's not the same, try to figure out why, but don't be so critical that you stop drawing entirely or try to trace over the drawing or make it exact. Um, you're trying to build a structure, right? Real life is gooey and squishy and bendy and dented. It's it's not, you know, geometric primitive perfection. Okay. That makes, that makes sense? Yeah. So none of the systems I'm ever going to show you are going to line up with a person perfectly. But try to use them anyway as a good starting point. Uh, so, so I don't have digital, right? So then... Mm -hmm. Uh, do I look at the samples that I'm going to use and then print them and then do all these calculations on top of them? Or? No. No, you do what you've always done. Try to draw something with a reference to look at. Okay. Okay. The reason I'm doing it this way is to show here are those structures I was talking about. But if you'd rather okay. that I draw free form and just put this off to the side, I can do that. Yes, please. Yes? Okay. This one's particularly hard for that, though. I picked a crazy angle because I thought it was good for all these structures. I would much rather draw a different foot than this one if I'm going to draw freeform. <laughs> Is that okay? Sure. Or do you want to yeah. torture me and have me draw this one? No. It's okay. You can no be torture you, today. You can be sadistic. It's all, all right. right. All right. <laughs> Let's see. What did I actually grab then? Because now, knowing that, all right, well... This one shouldn't be too bad. Let's do a little bit bigger. And since I'm going to draw next to it, let me mask off some of the white so I can get closer. All right. So then we're going to try to draw these free form. And so I'm just gonna start with, usually I would start with a gesture personally, which is just kind of a, a rough sketch to say, I see it doing this kind of thing. So not really concerned terribly about getting the anatomy right or the exact positions right, but just kind of go, 
this is what I see generally. So I see a foot sticking out over here. I see a foot going this way over here. I see it bending up, heel coming out. There we go. Okay. So there's my, my gesture of feet basically done. On top of this, I would start adding the structure that we were talking about, particularly where the direction changes happen. So I'm seeing along the toes here that there's a really strong direction change. So I'd probably put that in first and say that the toes are coming out this way and this last one kind of comes down like that. But to separate out the two different portions, this would be those lesser toes right, coming out like that. Then this is the greater toe, the, the big toe, kind of coming out almost, hmm, I'm gonna make it like this direction, which is a little bit more forward facing than the reference, but, eh, okay, let's try again. Let's see if I can get it more sideways. Let's go all the way out to here, there. So now I'm seeing less of the front, more of the side something like that. And then I can see the next toe needs to move up a bit. I didn't put it quite far out enough. Okay, so I would probably stop there with the toes because that's enough detail for the moment and then work on the rest of the foot before moving on. Uh, let's just get the bottom part over here and a nice round kind of bend for this. All right, so now we want the wedge shape. So I'm seeing this arch coming across the top. To be honest, I would probably bend it right from the start just because I know that it has a bend, uh, but I would flatten it out right at the bottom where it's starting to include that pinch. Um, something like that, and then try to get the side line, which I think goes about here. So kind of adding in those, those strict forms. Then I've got a little bit further back to go before I hit this ankle opening and trying to figure out how much of an angle do I have? Something like this. Yeah, about like that looks good. So I'm gonna keep scooting that back a little bit more. It looks like that's kind of lining up with where my sketch was, but that doesn't really make sense to me. I'm not sure why that box is kind of lining up with the heel direction, but in my sketch it looked right. So I'd probably just kind of like scratch my head and move on from it and then do the um, cylinder for the ankle. Okay, so that appears to be going this direction about like that and of course it's got its particular kind of swooping shape but I'll just leave it like that for the moment so that's about enough work on that for that stage two kind of construction and I'd probably just work on this back foot a little bit the back foot is turning way away from us in perspective there so I would try to observe that first hopefully catch it and do an angle something like like this I think where that first part of the toes is coming out way over here and that angle is going backward in that direction. Let's get that down. And then to add in that big toe, which is coming out and probably let's cross it up to about here. And I can see a pretty sizable portion of the front like that. And so now I'd, I'd probably start looking and try to do like a reality check here where this toe looks so much smaller than the toe I just drew that I would start to consider it to be something's wrong. What did I do? Maybe I need to move this away a little bit or like erase it and redraw it. Um, out of consideration for Lydia who can't move things, I'm gonna redraw it farther away. So I'm gonna erase away and say, well, you know what? That toe has to be about here so let's build up from there. That's okay. You'll join us in digital someday, Lydia. You'll love it. You, you can cut the paper then tape it somewhere else. Yeah, you could. Uh, actually, I know for a fact that in a storyboard, they would just use sticky notes. They just stick it over a drawing and just draw something else on top of it, which is great. I love that. Uh, all right, so we'll start with the big toe then. And then the same sort of thing holds true. I just have to adjust it so that it goes back farther. So let's get the... There we go, the angle for those toes and for the front. And they end up right about down here, I think. Okay, something like that. And then we've got the arch shape. We're looking almost right at it now. So we've get just a little bit of that bending. 
how high up should I go? Looks like just about even, pretty close to even here, something like that. And I don't know where the heel is, so I, I've got to guess based on the other one that it's somewhere out there. The reason I want to guess is to kind of place the ankle. I think the ankle's right about there so that I can determine the top of this and then the fact that that cylinder goes away in this direction. Uh, oh, I'm shrinking that cylinder. I'm doing what, what you guys do sometimes, shrinking it because it's going behind something. I need to resist that and say that, nope, they are overlapping. It's going back like that. You can just see some light coming through there though. So it's probably pretty close. All right, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, so at this point, I would probably do another pass over this to get even more specific structure. What we're missing so far is like individual toes and the kind of smoothness that we're seeing as a result of like tendons and stuff like that. Um, if I was doing this with pencil, this would be a good time to break out a kneaded eraser and just lighten everything up over the entire thing to draw over it darker. Um, since I'm not using uh, traditional, I can just turn the opacity down and use a new layer. But it's the same principle that you would just want to do this first pass, get all that structure, and then lighten it up so that you can draw over the top of it again. So this is the part then where I would start to figure out where are all the individual little structures that I want. Like here's a pinky toe here that I can see. And it sort of looks like it's curling towards us a little bit. So it's hard to spot, but I'm gonna rough it in like there. And then the next one is clearly doing a nice stair-stepping shape. And I don't wanna go too far with any of them because I wanna make sure that they all fit in the same area. So here I end up getting the last toe. That's just about right. I've got a nice angle for that one. Let's do that. And for this one, keeping it nice and simple, right? See how like primitive my structures look? They're nowhere near as detailed as those. That's a good thing. Okay. And this one as well, coming up and over. Then we've got that toe. That toe just seems to be going straight out, really. And it's got this kind of angled sort of cut off here, but uh, I'm just gonna place in that top edge of that toenail and then just treat it as square for the moment. That seems about right. Okay, and so then it's attaching back here We've got that line kind of established. So I want to create this cylindrical shape where all of them are diving back into the structure of the foot with the exception of the big toe, which is just going somewhere else. Um, that's enough there. Now I've got those shapes and I'd want to do a reality check to look at the picture, look at what I've drawn and see if there's anything even close to the same. They're close enough. The only thing I'm seeing is that my big toe seems to be going too far that way. Whereas this one seems to have shortened up and come, in, come back a little bit. Although visually, it's pretty significantly longer. It might be that this, sec, this first toe, I've drawn too long. So I'm gonna erase that and shorten it. I think it ends up in this area. It's also lifted up. That yeah, too. yeah. And I don't think I did enough like this. Yeah. So if I want to put an edge on that one to show what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. Um, I do have some secondary structures here which are going to come into play like these tendons. Um, I could leave them off or I could sketch them in. If it were me by myself, I'd probably start sketching them in just to show here's one I see, here's one I see, that one, not so much. This one is big, really big. So I'd probably start to draw that in right away. And then this one is really obvious and also curvy, which is interesting. Okay, so I'd probably start putting in some of those just because I can spot them and then start structuring the rest of this. As far as the side structure goes, I'm pretty happy with what I had before. It just needs like a little extra bit for the fat pad like that. And then to basically just follow the structure that I have, 
Uh, the heel pad, it was odd, but it seemed to work. Yep, to just kind of move back here and then round this whole thing out because it's not under any particular pressure. The Achilles seems to be activated right now, which is probably why we've got that nice sweeping bend. So Achilles activated and then away we go up the leg. And if I wanted to be very careful about this also, I could say that across this ankle area, I know that there is an ankle bulge over on this side here. And this is probably it, but I'm not really seeing it very clear. So I would maybe put that in myself and say, there's gonna be an ankle here. Look for it, see if you can find it. If not, we'll erase that, you know, in just a little bit. Uh, this is actually the front that I've got here. I can see it's got this arch. So I'm gonna draw in that arch shape. This is the actual surface contour. Okay. And I try to remind myself that that is what's happening all the way down here. Okay, so just kind of doing a little bit of form on the side. I do see this, which I think is a difference between fat pad and um, bone structure. I don't think it's a tendon. So I might try to indicate that somehow, but likely I probably wouldn't because it's a little bit too much detail for the kind of illustration I'm trying to do. I'm also probably not gonna include veins or anything like that. All right, so we got a little bit of round structure here, just a bit, and then it sweeps up to the rest of the leg probably about that wide, considering how wide I drew the foot. All right, so as everything starts to kind of run together, I'm getting a more and more complete illustration of the foot, lighten up parts that I don't want to include so much. Okay, and then I can come in here to the toes and detail them out even more. At this part, I hardly even need to look at the reference anymore because my drawing is just taking on its own life. But to sure this up a little bit, then I would probably try to place the nails at the very least on each of these areas. I'm thinking probably about there and here. And if it's not accurate to the picture, I don't care because now this is my drawing. Okay, we'll do something like that. And this one, of course, was really, really in evidence right from the start and it practically is this structure that I've already got here. So let me draw the big toe a little bit better by adding in the fat pads and knuckle shapes that we can see. So that for that one, let me do take a look. Okay, so we can see one bulge here, then it's tendon, and not really anything besides the top of the toe. Got a really curvy toenail, do like that. One little bulge here and then sweep up the back like that. And then for the front, bulging out and then flattening out on the bottom. Whoop, I don't know what's happening with my pen. Something weird there. Yeah, there we go. I gotta zoom in more. There we go, so I could use my arm. Probably wanna keep this a little bit flatter. There we go, down to the bottom there. So there's nail to make sure it doesn't look like that's continuing all the way back there. Clean it up a little bit. This next toe needs significant cleaning up because I lifted it higher. So we've got knuckle detail up here. We might be able to see fat pads on the side, possibly. Did I move that other one over? Oh no, that was just a contour line. There we go. So we might end up being able to see like cleft marks down here as it kind of pinches and that we don't need. All right. That I can lighten up a little bit, darken this in. Possible that there would be some like wrinkle lines on the top of this, but I didn't see them. Okay. This I was leaving flat because there was pressure there, curving up and around. Okay. 
got to remember that that is a cylinder shape. So the wrinkle would go in this direction. I'm also reducing the size of my pencil at this point since I'm doing detail work, which would be the equivalent of switching to a higher number H pencil um, if you're working traditionally or sharpening it. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't have the benefit of like zooming in, which is a huge benefit in digital art. So I'm just kind of adding uh, contours to the knuckles, rounding out the parts that I think need rounding out, imagining where fat would sit and where um, bone would press, and the shapes of things as I think that they look appropriate or inappropriate. I'm editing. A lot of it is just by intuition and feel, though, uh, because it's now my drawing entirely and no longer subject to what the original picture was. We can still compare it against that, but really I need to take ownership at some point and say this is my illustration, not just a reproduction of a picture I saw. Otherwise, it will only ever be a reproduction of a picture I saw, and that's not as fun. Okay, Trying to put in indications of like three-dimensional structure here and there where I think it's appropriate. This last one, one. I know we had the pinky facing towards us. Kind of a triangular shaped fat pad because it's laying on its side. Kind of like that. Zoom back out, take a look at the original. So something like that. I think that big toe is still weird. Based on how I'm posing things, I think I need to like move it backward. Uh, but based on the drawing, I know that I was trying to line it up with what I saw originally. If it were just my drawing entirely, I'd take this and slide it all back. Take this and slide it all back to about there where it looks a bit more reasonable. If it were traditional, then I'd just have to erase and redraw. Looks a little bit better back then. Does that guy, give you guys an idea of like the kind of process that I would undergo drawing this stuff? Yeah. No. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, any questions? Any problems? That helped a lot. Cool. Good. I can do that more on camera, but I tend to go into a trance and forget that I have a class. So I tend to just start drawing and drawing and drawing and not remember to say anything useful. It, it makes more sense, though, to, to know the process like that. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that, yeah. Now, the ankle, when we draw it, do you want it to look like that or like actual? I, I just didn't finish it. Round it all? Yeah, oh, it's clearly round, right? But you're going to start with a shape like that because that's what's going on. And then I would use that to say, oh, okay, I probably have something in that area and I might see a shadow here, or maybe not. I might have like an extra tendon up here or not. I might have a half tone on this side. I don't know, I have to kind of look and see. But if you're gonna leave it uh, geometric, that's okay with me because it shows that you're doing your due diligence and trying to figure things out. If you're going to try to make it fully realistic like this, at least base it on those three-dimensional structures. Okay. Okay. So going this far isn't too far. Um, no. No. If you guys want to take a crack at it, sure. But let me see that underlying structure. Like, all of it isn't gone here. Like, you can see wedge shapes and cylinder shapes. In some cases, this is left over. Let me see that you have that stuff underneath that. Um, it should be evident that you have that stuff. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, then that might be it for now. When is the, the project due? Um, Still Tuesday? Oh, shit. Good question. Because <laughs> we don't have class. Oh. Uh, let me think about it. Tuesday, right? Hmm? They actually told me not to hold class at all next week. Really? We never get Thanksgiving off. 
I know. So, yeah, that was the order this time. So we'll say that this is due not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. I'll have to see what the date is on that. Um, but because they were saying this whole week is off, I guess that's what we're going to do. Yeah, my other class is off too. It would be December. Yeah, December 1st. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. That's right. Okay, so we got time to put in some detail. <laughs> sure. So we have 20 feet, like two for one drawing or just one foot? 20, 20 feet, however many humans you, you think is appropriate for that. <laughs> yep. So I can do 19 feet and one bird feet? <laughs> Bird feet are weird, but I like them. They're really cool. I have actually taught um, a comparative anatomy course before, and I took one in college, and it was really cool. Uh, we went to the zoo, drew animals, um, compared human anatomy to animal anatomy. It's really awesome. I bet it is. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, what was uh, the class that was after this that, that you, uh, in the beginning of the class, you said that there was one after this for animals? What was that one called? I, I don't think we have it offered at Norco, though. Yeah, it's Riverside, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, Riverside has visual visual arts as a new certificate that they're offering. Okay, cool. I think you were mentioning there was one after this, though. I'm not sure if it was me mentioning it, because I don't know very much about Riverside and their curriculum. It might have been someone else. You, you did mention a class. But I think oh, was a sorry. You you mean in our, in our structure. So this is, um, fi uh, what is this, 5A? No, we were at Art 40. This is an actual yeah. art curriculum uh, course. Art forty B is the next one. Yeah. So this, so this isn't a part like of the um, game courses or anything. But yeah, they do have forty B, which is essentially this same thing, but at a more advanced level. Um, I haven't actually ever seen that taught. I mean, I suppose they're offering it, so it must be offered. Um, what it essentially would be is come back and do this all again with a much greater understanding and try to get actual full illustrations instead of just structural kind of note taking. Okay. And especially pursuing the more loose and expressive part of figure drawing, which is the gesture and like the forces, the balance, that sort of stuff. But, okay, cool. but yeah, to be honest, I have not seen that actually filled. Like that class is never filled. So if, if they're offering it, that's cool, take it. I'd love to teach it. Okay. All right, you guys, any more questions? It's offered next year. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, offered is different than going to be held. Yeah, if you get 12 people in it, then it will be held. <laughs> Well, what does it matter? You had more than 12, and then now we're only nine. <laughs> well, it has to be 12 people who at least sign up to take the course. However many last, sometimes that doesn't matter. Although if it happens before census, they will cancel the class for that. That's happened mm -hmm. before. Yeah. I know. I was just trying to be funny. Oh, but that's my livelihood. That's not funny. All right. It's okay. <laughs> that's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. All right, you guys, then that's going to be end of the demo today. Hang out if you have extra questions, but have a good Thanksgiving break, and I will see you guys back in December 1st. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.